Father, we thank you. We worship your holy name. Thank you because you are here in our midst. You are dwelling on the praise of your people. We give you all adoration. We give you all praises. We give you all honor. Let your name be adored. Let your name be magnified in Jesus' name. As we go into your word, I pray you speak to our hearts and minister to us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Before we go, in, before we, go we will look at the word as usual. And today we are looking at Psalm 37, verse 23. Psalm 37, verse 23. Psalm 27, verse 23. I'm going to read from the AMP version, but you can follow me with any version that you, that you have. It says, The steps of a good man, or the steps of a good and righteous man, are directed and established by the Lord, and it delights in his way, and blesses his path. Hallelujah. The steps of a good and righteous man are directed and established by the Lord, and he delights in his way and blesses his path. Our topic today is the GPS to divine destiny. The GPS to divine destiny. Have you ever imagined what the world will look like without the GPS? Well, <laughs> it has happened before anyway. <laughs> uh, well, we don't have a GPS system. I wonder how it, how it was. At least I was alive then, right? I was alive when uh, there was no GPS. There was nothing like GPS. It was very difficult to move from one point to another, especially if you are going to a place you do not know. I never used map, but I was told that um, in the U.S. here, yeah, they use map before, you know, and so before you go out, you have to check the map. <laughs> you have to be sure of where you are going. You know, I heard of a couple where the husband said he doesn't like to use map. So he is on his way. He will tell the wife to be looking at the map at home and be directing, <laughs> directing him. <laughs> and he doesn't like listening to his wife. So you can imagine the kind of commotion that will be happening that day. So it's very, it's very difficult without a GPS system. I, I mean, I, mean, I don't know. Has anyone here been lost on the road before? Oh, I can. <laughs> yeah, I've been lost on the road. I'm telling you, I, I can't tell you the story. The story will take 30 minutes. Uh, but it was, not, it was not easy. It was, I got lost. And that time, I don't even know what happened. I think, um, yeah, we had phone. But my battery ran down on the road. And I did not memorize the number of the person I was going to visit. And as I was going on the road, I entered a bus. The bus had a flat tire. So we were there till late night. Right? I was just stuck on the road. I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know where I was. I don't know where I was coming from. I don't know. The road. I was just stuck on the road. <laughs> like, I don't know how God saved me that night. Well, they managed to repair the tire. By the time I got to my destination, I was going to a church, actually. They invited me to come and teach, um, um, uh, I think it was violin and piano to some people. So they waited and waited for me. They tried calling me. My phone was off. So you know, they left. They thought maybe something happened and I was not going to come again. So when I got to the church, I was like, I'm here. I got there very late in the night, like 12 midnight. The man looked at me and said, who are you? I'm like, I'm, I'm here. I was supposed to come and teach. He said, they didn't tell me anything about you. I'm like, but I, said, I brought out my Bible. Look at my Bible. I'm a member of the, of the church. He said, no, I'm sorry. I don't know you. I'm like, so where am I going to go this night? <laughs> it was not funny. It was not funny, but God saved me. Hallelujah. I managed, I managed, I found my way around the school where I slept in that night. I slept in the classroom, and God did it this way. That classroom I slept, some people came and had morning devotion there. So I was listening to the morning devotion, so something just said, go and ask these people, do they know 
the name of the person I was looking for, you know. So I just went, I just went, ah, I'm sorry, I'm looking for somebody. Do you know him? Ah, they said, yes, we know him. He's our pianist. I said, thank you, Jesus. I find my way in this place. But I was, I'm just trying to say it's very difficult without a GPS. You understand? Very difficult without a GPS. And in life too, when we don't have GPS system, and I will explain what we mean by GPS here. When we don't have a GPS, many times we lose direction to where God wants us to be. And my desire for everyone is that we will get to our destination in Jesus' name. Even God himself said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, right? Thoughts of peace and not of evil so that you can get to your expected hand. Hallelujah. And that is my passion. That is my passion. That is my prayer for myself and for everyone around me that will get to our destination in Jesus' name. So what is G? In the divine GPS, G is good sight and hearing. Good sight and hearing. All right? You know, before you start a journey, you want to have a mental picture of where you are going. Before I go to a restaurant, I want to check out the restaurant on Google. Does that happen to you? If you're going somewhere, you're going to downtown, we want to look at a street view. What is going on around here? Let me just look at it so that when I get there, I know I've gotten there. <laughs> okay? The same thing in life. You need insight and foresight for where you are going in life. You need to have a mental picture of, where, of what your future looks like. You know, that's why when we are discussing this morning, right? I was telling both of you that you need to start thinking ahead. This is what I, I should be or this is where I can be or this is where I should, you know, this is what I want to do. And you start visualizing it in your head. Start thinking about it. What you are doing is you are creating a mental picture of your future. If you don't have that mental, mental picture in your head, you, even when you get closer to your destination, you will not know you've gotten there. So that is why good vision is good. And that's what I call vision, right? You need vision. You need vision. That is just a simple way of saying vision. It's just a mental picture. You know, your ability to see the purpose for your life. You, are, you, you want to see where you are going. And I pray God will give it to you. And every one of us, we have it in Jesus' name. But you know, as you move, you know, you have a mental picture of where you are going. But as you begin to drive, you know, just... Just um, um, picture yourself driving. I'm going to use driving today to explain because we are talking about GPS. You know, as you begin to drive, you also need good eyes, right? I know some people that don't drive in the night because they, do, they will not see well. So you need good eyes so that at least you will not go into the other lane, right? You can follow signs. Imagine you cannot see well. What will happen? Huh? panic, right? You'll be panicking. You cannot see well. You don't even know when to stop. When they say red light, because you did not see the red light, you go over the red light, right? And that can cause what? Accident. So you need good eyesight to be able to see, to, for you to know where you are going. You need good eyesight to know when to turn, right? When the GPS says go to the, go to the right, you need good eyesight to know I need to turn on this side. So you need good eyesight. That's what I'm saying. So that G is about good eyesight. You have, you need vision. Whether it's insight or foresight that we talked about, mental picture, but apart from that, you need to be able to see. So when opportunities come your way that you need to take, you take them. You understand? So you need good eyesight. Very good eyesight. Vision of life is the ability to see your purpose for your life. And you need to see it before you can leave it. Do you know when Pilate called Jesus and Jesus was about to die and Pilate asked Jesus one question. He said, Who, are you the king? All right? Are you the king? Jesus said one thing. He said, to this end was I born. You see that in John chapter 18 verse 37. He said, to this end was I what? Was I born. Ah, you asked Jesus, what do you mean? Jesus is trying to say, you see, me dying right now is the reason why I was born. So I've gotten to my end. You understand? So if Jesus saw his end before his end, are you getting me? Jesus saw what he came for. He knew why he was, he knew why he was born. And the question I will ask every one of you today is, do you know why you were born? 
Very difficult question, I know. Very difficult question. Why was I born? Because Jesus said, you see, Pilate, to this end was I born. Mm, you are holding me right now to die. This is the reason I'm born. This is the reason I, was, this is the reason I came. In fact, this is what I've been working for since for 33 years. Okay? So you can go ahead and kill me. <laughs> okay? This is the reason I came. You must always ask yourself that question. Why was I born? And the only person that knows the answer is who? Is God. And that's why we have to ask God. God, show me why was, why am I born? Am I just coming to live in this earth to pass by? No. There is a reason why you were born. God told Jeremiah that before you were born, I already knew you. I would already ordained you as a prophet. You understand? There are some people that have that privilege that in, during their naming ceremony, they prophesied over their lives. This is who you are going to be. But not everybody has that, that, uh, that prophecy on them. Then you have to find out yourself. Even those that have the prophecy on them, if they did not tell them when growing up, they will not know. I mean, my son now does not know anything that happened in his naming ceremony. He was just there sleeping, <laughs> right? Nothing. So if you like prophesy, somebody has to tell him this is the prophecy that happened. Okay? So always ask yourself, why was I born? Why was I born? You must have that vision. It's not enough to have physical eyes. It's not enough to have just physical eyes. You must also have vision. You must also have that insight. You must also have that foresight. In fact, the worst person that can have, the worst thing that can happen to a man, right, is having eyes without vision. Having physical eyes without what? Without vision. That is the worst thing that can happen to a man. I know it's very, it's bad to be blind, right? Uh, because uh, we want everybody to see, right? But even, you know, there are many blind people with vision, okay? There are many people who, do not, who don't have physical eyes, but they have vision, okay? And because they have vision, they were able to make it very well in life. Let me give you an example. Have you heard of Fanny Crosby? Fanny Crosby. You know heard of Fanny Crosby? Fanny Crosby is, I will tell you, by the time I mention the songs Fanny Crosby has composed, you will know who Fanny, Fanny Crosby is. Fanny Crosby was not born blind, but she became blind at the age of six weeks. Six weeks, when she was a baby. When she was born, she had an eye infection, and the mothers they didn't know what to use. They just made a concussion and put on the eyes not knowing that the eyes, that thing is going to make her blind. So she became permanently blind. Okay? But at the age of eight, she started writing poems. Okay? Now, Fanny Crosby then started writing a lot of hymn songs. Do you know the songs that Fanny Crosby has composed? Pass me not to gentle Savior. Blessed assurance. To God be the glory. <laughs> okay? She wrote a lot of songs that we sing today. In total, she composed about 8,000 hymns. So there is no way we'll be singing hymns today without singing a Fanny Crosby hymn. You get it? That is to tell you, you see, she changed her physical challenge. She did not allow her physical challenge to hinder her from fulfilling her purpose. Hallelujah. She did not have physical eyes, but she had what? vision she has spiritual eyes and i pray that god will enlighten the eyes of our understanding in jesus name my prayer for every one of you here is that you will have vision in jesus name even for me i pray for every one of us that we will have vision that we will never lose vision we'll never lose sight of where god is taking us in the mighty name of jesus and once we have vision you know what we are discussing at the mentorship class it's going to help you to also make the right decision Vision helps you make the right what decision. So once you have vision of what you are going to be in life, it will be very easy for you to find your, your, your line, your field. You understand? It will limit you jumping from one place to the other. It will limit you jumping from one place to the other. I was telling them in the morning that when I first came, I told you, right, many people were convincing me, what are you doing? Is something okay with you? Are you, are you, are you, are you fine? This other place you are living, there is so much money there. Why are you not doing that? And I'm like, that, yes, there is so much money there, 
but it's not correlating with the vision I see for my life. You understand? And so, because I have the vision already, it gave me that stamina to withstand that pressure. I mean, there was pressure. I mean, you know what I mean, pressure? People will call you on the phone and say, let us pray. You know, are you okay? Is everything okay? <laughs> why, why are you making this decision? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you understand what I mean? So you have to be careful. But once you know the vision, nobody will shake your mind. Do you understand? So vision is so important. So the first thing I said is good vision and hearing. Because when you are driving, imagine your GPS is only going there, there. Some people don't like looking at the map when driving. They just like to hear. I like looking at both. I mean, which one do you like doing? You, you like looking. What, what do you like doing? Yeah. You, like, you, you like hearing. <laughs> I have a friend who doesn't like, to, she doesn't like to look at it. She doesn't like to look at it, but she likes to hear. You know, turn left, turn right. For me, I like both. <laughs> I want to see and hear. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you need good positioning and hearing because if you don't hear, you are going to miss out. When the GPS says turn left, you do not hear, you keep going, you miss your route. And now you have to reroute yourself. Okay? So you need good good vision, good sight, but and hearing. Okay, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. That is what Jesus said, John 10 verse 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they do what? And they follow me. Now, how do we hear from God? That is a topic on its own. And by God's grace, I will treat that topic one day. Hallelujah. How do you hear from God? There are many ways to hear from God. The word of God, right? Impression, perception. Like what we are saying in the morning. Sometimes you hear God by, as I'm talking to you now, God can use me to talk to you. You understand? Through his servants, you hear God. You hear God through dreams and visions. Or you hear God through audible voice. There are some people that have heard a big voice talk to them. Okay? And say, go here. So you hear God through audible voice. But we are going to deal with that later. Okay? We'll take it as a topic and I will explain how to hear from God. But it's always good for you to find out how God speaks to you. You are not too young or too old to find how God speaks to you. By now, you should know how God speaks to you. Okay? So you are not confused. So it's something you should find out and practice. Because the more you learn the voice, the more you will know the voice. You understand? The more you learn the voice, the more you know the voice. The more you learn the voice, the more you know the voice. So it's a learning process. It's a learning process. The more you learn the voice, the more you know the voice. Alright? I'm sure you know the voice of your mother. Why? Because you've lived with her for many years. Even when she calls you, even if she uses another number to call you, you can tell that this is my mother's voice because you've lived with her. You understand? The same thing. If you stay, <laughs> your mother is looking at you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you stay, if you stay, if you stay with God, if you stay with God and practice hearing from God, you will surely hear from God. Hallelujah. So the first one is good, good positioning, good, um, what do I call it? Good eyesight and hearing. Hallelujah. Number two, the P is patience and faith. Patience and faith. When you are not patient when driving, you are prone to misdirection and you have accidents. <laughs> a patient causes accidents, right? So you need patience. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36. It says, For ye have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, ye might receive the word promise. How do you, how do you learn patience? You practice it. <laughs> you know, some people say, Father, I, need, I, I heard one prayer that somebody prayed. He said, Father, I need patience and I need it right now. <laughs> How can you, you are, all, you are already impatient for the patience. <laughs> he said, I need patience and I need it right now. <laughs> you are not patient for the, the prayer of patience. Anytime you say, God, help me to be patient, get ready because something is coming. That you will have to be patient. <laughs> okay? You will have to be patient. Do you know what patience is? It's the ability to wait. Waiting in the will of God. Hmm? Waiting. Waiting without worrying. That is patient. If you are patient, if when you are waiting and you are still worrying, ah, Father, when is it going to happen? Ah, why is it not happening? Ah, ah Father, why is it? Some of us pray 
in worry. He pray, the reason why we are praying is because we are worried. <laughs> you understand? Ah, Father, do it right now. Right now. Right now. <laughs> I want it now. And God said, be patient. Be patient. You, I've not finished cooking the food that you want it raw. Calm down. Okay? So we we'll be patient without worrying. And while we are patient, we are working. We are not idle. Okay? We are working. We are doing things. We are trying to do things. We are serving. While we are patient, you don't just wait. Okay, we are doing things. Then as you are patient, as you are waiting, you are also walking in faith. So when I say I'm waiting, I know it's going to come. You know, there are many things that have happened in my life this year. And sometimes it looks like it's not coming. And my wife will say, ah, we need to, I say, don't worry. It's going to come before the end of the year. How do you know? Just calm down. <laughs> it's going to come <laughs> before the end of the year. You know, you need faith to say that, right? You need some level of faith. And that's what God expects us to do, actually. That you see, I don't care about the bills. I'm telling you, uh, last week I saw a bill, right? I saw the bill. My first, if it was just normal me, I would worry. Ha, how are we going to pay this thing now? But I've learned because I've, this year, I've seen bills and bills, so I've learned. So, immediately they send me the message, your bill has been increased, and you are going to pay this amount. I just marked red. <laughs> went to the next <laughs> went, to the, went to the next state. I cannot worry myself. You will not be worried in Jesus' name. Just be patient. Be patient. And you see, one thing about GPS is, when, especially when you're on a long journey, you also go through the silent period. Have you noticed that? Sometimes your GPS is on, but it's not saying anything. Ah, and you'll be going. I've driven a lot of long journeys so far, I know. And you'll be going. Ah, you check. Ah, is my GPS still on? It's on. Ah, well, it's not saying anything. Is the volume working? It's working. The GPS said, I've not said, we are not turning right. You are not turning left. So just keep going until you hear when it's time to turn right. You know, sometimes we worry. We keep pressing the, with the phone. I, I say left. Say, say right. And the GPS says you have 25 miles more to go. Keep going. <laughs> okay? Silent periods are very tough, but those are times we need to depend on God. God, what are you saying? And God says, what did I tell you last time? Uh, <laughs> just keep going. Just stay there. God, God, speak. God, speak. What are you saying? What should I do now? God says, what did I say the last time? Just stay there. Silence. It's very difficult. Silence periods are difficult, but that is part of patience. You know? And another thing you know as in terms of patience is that when God comes sometimes, some of us are expecting that God will answer in manifestation. But God sometimes does not answer in manifestation. He answers with promises. Okay? God answers with promises. God says, you are saying, God, can you give me this job? And God says, I will give you this job next year. He has given you the promise. You've not seen it. What do you have to do when God has given you the promise? What do you do? You begin to thank God because it's going to happen. Okay? There are many things I've not seen in my life. I'm just holding on to the promises of God. I've not seen it happen. But because God said so, it's going to happen. Hallelujah. So sometimes when you pray and you ask God for things, God will not give you the answer. He will give you a promise. And when God gives you a promise, hold on. Just begin to thank God. Hallelujah. So we have looked at G. We have looked at P. The G is what? Good sight and hearing. The P is what? Patience and faith. And the last one, before we pray, is the S. GPS is the spirit of God. Hallelujah. The spirit of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 14. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the what? The sons of God. I like it in AMP. For all who are allowing themselves to be led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. If you look at TPT, TPT says, the mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So, of course, when we are going, navigating our life to divine destiny, we need the Spirit of God. Somebody say, I need the Spirit of God. 
There are many things the Spirit of God will do to you. He's going to reroute you. If you have made mistakes in life, the Spirit of God is going to reroute you. He's going to reroute you. Remember Paul? Do you know that Paul was innocently zealous? How many of you know that? Paul, when he was killing the Christians, he was innocently zealous. It was like he was supposed to be going north of um, uh, north of 85, right? But you start going south of 85 with 90 miles per hour. <laughs> okay. Okay, and you think that that is the right road. You know, somebody says, oh, you want to go to North Carolina. To go to North Carolina, is this not, right? To go to North Carolina, you're supposed to go North 85. But ah, you miss the road, and you start going south. And you are going south with speed, with 90 miles per hour. That is Paul. Paul was going the, the other way with speed. Until the Holy Spirit caught him. All right, you are making a mistake. Make a U-turn. That's what the Holy Spirit does for us. It reroutes us when we have made mistakes in life, okay? So the first thing, the Spirit of God reroutes us. The Spirit of God redirects us because sometimes in the journey of life, you have to get through traffic. You get through sometimes, you are stuck. You are on traffic and there is no way. And this is not a country where when there is traffic, you take uh, unknown lane. <laughs> in this country you abide by the law right when there is traffic you stay there so sometimes in life there is traffic and when there is traffic what do you do the Holy Spirit can redirect you and say okay now I know I said go straight before now turn right so that you can get there early you understand that's what the Spirit of God does the Spirit of God also refreshes us and renews us how many of you have slept on steering before <laughs> uh, you've done it before. <laughs> I've slept on steering before. Thank God for that. Um, uh, you know those things they put by the by the cup that you know when your tire gets there. Yeah, immediately that thing happened to me. I just went to park. I'm like, Lord Jesus, thank you for saving my life today. <laughs> you know, because sometimes when you are going on a long journey, you get tired, and sometimes life is like that too. You get tired, you get sleepy, you get lethargic. And the only person that can help you is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their what? Their strength. So sometimes if your journey looks long, what do you do? Let the Holy Spirit help you. God, this, ah, Father, I don't know when this will happen. This is long. It's too long. Father, hey. You know, <laughs> let me just tell you something funny. Uh, I woke up one day. And uh, my wife said, oh, I need to pick up, I need to go and help the children and um, tidy them up. Okay, it was a, I think it was a Saturday. And I'm like, ah, when am I going to have my Saturday? And just sleep till 10 o'clock. And my wife said, don't worry, in the next 10 years. I said, 10! <laughs> I said, do you know what 10 years is? <laughs> my wife said, I'm trying to console you. I said, no, 10 years is not consoling. 10 years is long. <laughs> what do you mean by 10 years? He said, yes, by the time you had 10 years to the age of my children, that is when they will be independent. I'm like, 10 years is long. It's long. <laughs> I know, journey in life is like that. But at those times, we need the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We need the Holy Spirit to refresh in us and to renew us. Hallelujah. We need the Holy Spirit to remind us of where we are going, of what we are doing. We need the Holy Spirit to remind us. And we also need the Holy Spirit to reassure us that where we are going is the place. I've been traveling before. I know we are going for this conference and we did not know that we are going to pass through bushes here in the U.S., in Pennsylvania. And, but as we were going, we were like, ah, GPS said that this is the right place. Are we sure? We will check the GPS. GPS will say, you're on the right route. Oh, my. But the signs around us doesn't look like we're on the right route. Just keep going, you're on the right route. Well, we say, well, the, you know, while you check, the time is reducing, the mouse is reducing, it looks like we are getting there. And we got there. The place was inside a bush. It was a campground inside a bush. But you see, because we saw on the GPS the destination, it was reassuring us that no matter, it doesn't matter what you see, the bush on the side, just keep going, right? Just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. 
your destination is sure. And the Lord will take us there in Jesus' name. So we have talked about the GPS that you need to navigate your life. G is good sight and hearing. P is a patience and faith. And S is what? Of the Spirit of God. As we pray, if you are not born again, of course you don't have the Spirit of God. And that means that nothing is going to lead you to your divine destiny. We are bound to misery. So if you are not born again, please, I beg you, you are listening to me online or in house, please make sure your life has been surrendered to God. And if you are born again, you make up your mind that you will follow God's GPS. Hallelujah. No matter what. It might not be easy. It might not be easy. But we'll keep trusting God. We'll keep trusting God as we get to our destination in Jesus' name. We're going to sing a song of trust. And as we sing that song of trust, I just want you to trust in God and tell God that you trust him and that you are giving your life to him. And as he leads us, we are going to get to our destination in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Why not go to, your, to the Lord in prayer? Say, so Lord, I thank you because you have a GPS for me. Thank you because you are going to lead me. Thank you because you are going to direct me. Thank you because you are going to take me to that place where I belong in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I trust in you. I trust in you. You are my God. You are my God. Oh Lord, my God. Oh Lord, my God. I trust in you. I trust in you. I trust in you. I trust in you. You are my God. You are my God. Everybody, can you just help me tonight? Oh Lord, my God. Oh Lord, my God. I trust in you. I trust in you. Prayer tonight, lift your voice with me. I trust in you, God. I trust in you. Since you are my God, you are my God. Oh Lord, my God. Oh Lord, my God. I trust in you. I trust in you. I trust in you. Father, you are my God. There is nothing, nothing to hold you. Oh, there is nothing you cannot do. Yes, there's no mountain you cannot do. I trust in you. I want to pray if you have not given your life to Jesus, this is another morning for you to give your life to Jesus. Why not ask God to be your Savior? Tell Him to come and dwell in your heart. Tell Him to be your God this morning. Tell Him to forgive you of all your sins. If we confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us all our, for all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I pray that the Lord will have mercy upon you. And as you confess and ask for forgiveness, Jesus Christ will be your Savior and Lord in Jesus' name. And I pray for all those who have given their lives to Jesus. I pray that the divine GPS will continue to guide you. I pray you will not miss your way in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray the Lord will give you good vision. The Lord will give you good hearing. I pray the Lord will give you patience. The Lord will give you faith. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray that the Spirit of God will guide you. The Spirit of God will reroute you when needed. The Spirit of God will direct you. The Spirit of God will refresh you. The Spirit of God will remind you of where to go. And the Spirit of God will continue to reassure you every of your day, every of your life in Jesus' name. I pray that none of us will miss the road. None of us will miss the path to our destination in Jesus' name. Every one of us will fulfill our purpose in life. And we'll, at the end of our life, oh God, we'll look and compare our life with God's template. And we'll be happy that we have fulfilled everything God wants us to fulfill in Jesus' name. I pray for strength, strength, strength to keep staying on the path of destiny. That nothing will distract you in the mighty name of Jesus. You will fulfill your purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. As we go, this week is going to be a blessed week for you. It's going to be a beautiful week for you. It's going to be a blissful week for you in Jesus' name. Testimonies we are bound for you. Doors of favor will be opened for you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Let your name be praised. I pray for every sickness and every, every ailment in the body to be taken away in the mighty name of Jesus. By his stripes you are healed and healed forever in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you and have a great week. Thank you for listening to this message. I hope you are blessed. If you were blessed, please subscribe to this channel so you can get more of our content. Please share to your friends and families. And please support this ministry by going to our website and clicking on the Give menu. I pray as you do so, the Lord will bless you and the Lord will continue to increase you and give you peace on every side. God bless you. Bye.